I'm live currently. So let's see. Bad with us. So let's fingers crossed. <laughs> Well, apparently, we are live. Guten Tag, ciao, hi, my name is Mihai, and I welcome you to our wood event page, where we are, uh, where we're gonna go for with a new daily project, and that's YouTube. We have it there, so now we are simultaneously on two channels, on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So more people will be able to join our big creative family. And, <laughs> and it's my first time, so please be kind to me. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, from time to time, I will just switch from two cameras because we're working now, as I said, on the YouTube and uh, Facebook page. So today we're going to go uh, and start with a new, we'll say, quick project with our board. There we find it in a... From where do you have it? I think it was from a charity shop. It was from, from a charity shop and we tried to make it uh, more interesting, let's say. Let's give that posh touch that we have here from Posh Chalk and Woodbend Products here. So today we're going to use our Posh Metallic Paste Blue Prussian. Prussian, yeah. Prussian. Prussian. And we're gonna use some patina. And finally, as promised, I'm gonna use some pearly pigments, platinum gold from our Posh Chalk Precious Collection. And patina extending wax. From our Woodband products, we're gonna use 6060 third generation moldings and 1232 as well, third generation molding. As you can see, they come in a new package. 90% of our products are as pair. So in one package you have two of them. They might mirror one another or it will be exactly the same. So uh, as you will see, it has a new package with a new plastic uh, coverage, which is very beautiful. And you may attach it right in your shop, if you're in your store, if you have one. And third generation means that it has a high compression rate, which uh, gives us uh, sharper details. We improved the design. We have a clearer design now. So it's perfect version of the previous one. And got please, this. everybody, say hello to our lovely Shannon. There, we we'll read your comments. We've got some lovely people joining us today. We've got Diane on Facebook. Good morning from Boston, Massachusetts. Laurie saying hello again, Dream Team. We've got Kim hello. saying hello, and she shared it already. Fabulous. We've got Liz say from Ottawa, she's expecting 10 inches of snow. And Ooh. on YouTube, we have Seema saying hello. We have Claudia Fernandez saying hello also. On YouTube. Oh, we have people on YouTube. Yay. Fine. So uh, when you open the, the package, uh, you may use a scissor or a craft knife, or if you have nails, you may use basically your nails. Uh, the thing is, when you're using a craft knife, please, always safety first, as I like to, to say and repeat and remind, because I cut myself a, a few times, so that's why. Cut from yourself. Obviously, if there's no one in front of you, as it usually happens to me that Shannon is in front of me, then you have to choose another direction. So, uh, while we're talking and while I go through, I'm going to put some uh, 1232 on a griddle. So they will got warmer. So just explain to people on YouTube why we put them on the griddle. So the third generation moldings, wood event moldings, they might they have the same property as would natural wood have. So basically you have you may drill it, uh, nail it, stain it, paint it, sand it, and basically everything that you are able to do with a natural wood, you would be able to do with a with woody band products, uh, uh, but it has a, a bit of extra that has a 
strong points. A magic touch. A magic touch that when it's warmed up, it's getting really bendy and flexible and it gives you much more possibilities and opportunities to apply it on different shapes of furniture or on different shapes of your project. For example, if you have a tube that you want to decorate or you have a staircase that you want to decorate, it would be no problem at all. As once it's warmed up with a heat gun, with an electric griddle or with a, even a hairdryer, it will bend as you wish, more than 90 degrees on any, in every way, and I will show it today. So basically, you'll see how I'm uh, molding. From that shape, basically, I will bend it until it will have a straight line so we can fix it on, uh, on our board. While they are warming up, I will just use uh, a wet wipe to clean a bit our board and to tape it around so we ain't gonna ruin our chalk surface. Okay. But meanwhile, please don't forget, be, uh, feel free to let us know where you're joining us from, how's the weather, where you are, and... Uh, don't forget to like, share, sprinkle, and subscribe. Exactly. And um, if you're working on any projects, please let us know. If you have any questions, more questions, feel free to ask us. That's the purpose of that live. Well, now I'm just going to take some uh, masking tape. And I'll go over the sides. To protect it. So please let us know on YouTube if you can hear us because it is our first time we've been we've gone live on YouTube. I do realize as I'm saying this, and you can't hear us, you can't let us know. So please let us know if uh, there, there are any problem with the sound or with the <laughs> video. They might they won't hear us if there's problem with the sound. Uh, we might bring the chalk. That's why we'll write the chalkboard. Okay. Rebecca Boucher, hello again, Benty friends. Hello, Rebecca. We've got Laurie spread the blessings. Ooh. And Pam, hello from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Ooh. So why are you putting tape on this, Mihai? So I'm basically putting the tape because I don't want to ruin and uh, paint over the the board. Chalkboard. Chalkboard. So just as a measure of protection. So don't forget, all you guys on Facebook, please like, share, and sprinkle, and tag your friends in the comments. If they've never heard of Posh Off or Would You Bend or they don't watch our lives, tag them. Spread the bendy love. I got a feeling that everything should be fine. And to always... Don't forget to send me me high lots of love hearts. Oh, come on. Now we're in February, the month of love. <laughs> I'm not a good. Share some love to Shannon as well. Come on. She deserves it. She might be bossy sometimes, but that's okay. All the best people are. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, I prepared it. So basically, that's what happened what happened when the woodbend product is, is so getting warmed up. Fresh off the griddle, you'll see just how bendy the woodbend mouldings can get. So basically, as you may see, you may twirl it as so you if, wish. If you would like to purchase any of the products we are using in this video, the woodbend mouldings or the post chalk pastes, or the other Poshock products, please go to the woodyoubend.com website. There you will find um, a section where it says, find your nearest stockist. You can find your nearest stockist by typing in your address and it will send you straight to where you can purchase all of our products. The five easy steps, don't look at my finger, the five easy steps to apply the woodyoubend molding so you have the same results as we do here, is basically you have to warm it up as I just did on the griddle. You have to apply the glue on the back of it, like to cover all the area of the molding or trim and of any woodland product. Then you have to apply it on the surface, press it down, 
you have to warm it up once again and then press it once more. But now, seeing that... Seeing as though we are, will be bending this molding quite a bit, we're going to make sure that it's nice and warm so that it will be more flexible. Warmer the wooden bend product is, better if it's bending. So, patience and take your time. If you're using a heat gun, make sure that you always keep it moving as we previously said, the wood and powder contains a high percentage of wood. So when you use a heat gun, seeing that it's a power tool, you risk to burn or scorch your wood and products, with, uh, which I don't think that it's exactly what would, what would you like. So you can see how bendy it is. We're almost bending it. We're probably bending it probably 90 degrees. And me has decided to bend one part at a time just to make sure it's nice and straight. So we've got Juliana. Hi, she's back again. Hello, Hello Juliana. Hey, friend from Arkansas. Please let me know. It, it is Arkansas, right? Because Mihai called it Arkansas and I told him he was wrong. Well, that's the way I heard it in the movies. <laughs> so that's the way it's written. Let us know. So please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so all you need to work with a woodland product is to have a good quality wood glue and your imagination because you're limited only by yourself as you may cut or from more moldings to create your own design. So you can bend them, you can combine to have something unique okay so that was done so as you can see from that i bend it and shape it in another shape as i wanted to okay then i'll turn it over and i'll do exactly the same with the other one. Ooh, oh we've got some happy dancing Kim what? says, I've been happy dancing today. I finally found a second-hand pine chest of drawers at a sensible price, which we can collect next Sunday. Great. I'm stunned. My partner, Paul, said yes, as I had to add, I will need brushes, would you bend, and paint. <laughs> I, am now, I now need a stockist happy to post to Cyprus within Europe. Ooh, yeah. Well, I'll check for you, Kim, after the live. But um, you can all, what, always go on wouldyoubend.com, find your nearest stockist and have a look and if you can't find a stockist near you i will send you some um online websites where you can purchase and then you can pay for the shipping basically i always say it's uh, always better to have a bit more glue than not enough and it's always good to cover all the back of it you may use a paintbrush if it's more comfortable for you or just go with a finger <laughs> as i'm doing it so it's all back to you. Always have a choice. It always up. I'm sorry, YouTube. We can't get any closer at the moment, but we are working on the setup because this is our first um, live. And we will be moving the YouTubes to a iPhone so we can get a lot closer. But unfortunately, at the moment, we've had to, we are filming it on a laptop. So that can't get any closer, I'm afraid. Well, uh, I will move it a bit closer so you can see it better. Pam is saying, do the retailers have this Would You Bend to sell? This is the design. Would you bend 18? No, it's no, not. It's 12. 12 32, and I cannot read upside down. So it's <laughs> 12 32. 32. 1, 2, 3, 2. Well, it's kind of strange to go over like in, and to, yeah. <laughs> to start in one point and to finish in another. Okay, so as you see, to shape it, to model it, you all you have to warm it up at all time, every time. So, because once it's solid, it's wood. So you just have to warm it up again so you'll be able to 
shape it. So also, if you see any designs that you do enjoy and you know you want on our lives, please remember the numbers. We always give out the number of the mouldings that we use on the lives and in our YouTube videos. It's always in the description. Please remember the number and you can give it to your local stockist or distributor and you can let them know, please, I would really like this one. And we, I will remind for those of you who just joined us or are the first time just opened the, the YouTube, uh, there are five easy steps to apply a woodman the products that you should always follow to have the same result we do have here. So you have to warm it up, you have to apply the glue on the back of it, you have to press it on the surface, to apply it on the surface, press it down, uh, warm it up again, and then press it, press it down. Oh, that would look really nice here. You know what? I'm going to cover all the area in glue. I guess it will be much, much easier. All the surface area in glue? No, because it will give an extra texture, so I could have done that as well. So with the moldings, we say that you should cover all the back of it. With the trim, you have an actual choice. Because if you use a trim, you may apply the glue on a surface where it's supposed to be applied. The trim itself, especially if it's a, if you know exactly. As you see, we always give a choice with our products to our customers. So everything will be. Don't fear, Kim. We are working on getting as many distributors and stockists as we can to spread the Would You Bend love around the world. <laughs> around the world, around the world. We've got Kriya Red saying, hi, everybody. Greetings from Germany. Guten Tag, Deutschland. Hope I said it right. Kriya, so, let me know. <laughs> creating with Chris Hunter. He's asking, does he have that on a warmer? If so, can we see it? So I'll just move the camera. We actually have it on a sausage griddle. So you can see there, it's just on an electric griddle, warming up. We've just put some tin foil on it and it keeps it nice and cool. Well, basically uh, to keep it in the same shape, that, uh, in the shape that you want it, all you have to do is to keep it in a position while it's uh, getting cold. So while it's turning back to its solid state, so once it's in its cold state, it will stay like this. And Mihai is just holding it in place. Yes. While I'm doing that, it would be a dream come true to have a craft shop here. Okay. What? No, oh, come on. I'm, I'm taking closing. my job. I don't start mixing your pigments. <laughs> Do I have someone from Korea? Oh, I'm not sure. I can't read it. <laughs> well, I can't either, but it's look, it looks like, well... We're hoping that these videos will save so people can watch them in their own time also. Uh, Sima Batija, I guess. So I'll just get it closer to you so you can see it. Everyone. So I'm going to apply now the same 60-60 on the other part as well. So this time. I'm going to do it. As with the trim, as however, I'm going to paint it over and uh, I just want to give it an extra texture to my surface. So, if you'll have a bigger molding, I would not recommend you to do that. You shouldn't do it with any of the moldings. You should only put the glue on the back of the Witchburn moldings. Mihai. Okay. So, and now again, keep it in position. Ooh. So, how's the weather where you're from? Because we have a really windy days lately. So, only put your glue on the back of the wood bend moldings. It needs to be all over the back of the surface. This one that Mihai might fall to the floor because he didn't do it properly. And then I'll laugh at you. 
Yeah, she does. For being a terrible teacher. Me? A naughty terrible teacher. teacher. Well, have you seen the movie with the camera and tears? Bad teacher. That's me. Well, so I, if you're joining us on YouTube, let, let us know where you're joining us from. We're so happy to have people on YouTube. We've never had it. So it's our first time, so please be kind. We've got Kim saying hello from Texas. Laura says this is just beautiful. Thank you. And we have right. Aurora sending the parts. So that's... Sorry, can I just get a heating up and then push it? Yes, obviously you can. Obviously. Ready? So with the excess glue, don't be afraid. If you do see some more extra glue seeping out of the sides, it just simply means the mouldings are adhering well to the surface. So you can wipe them up like me, I was doing with a cotton bud, a wet wipe, or a wet paintbrush. Or you may leave it uh, on the surface, as it will give it an extra texture to your project. If you want a, a textured surface, obviously. If you want a clean one, then obviously you have to clean it. Kriya, this is a chalkboard. So we'll be using it to remind Mihai where to put the glue. <laughs> <sighs> she loves that. She really loves that. And Laura so, says it's cold in California. I don't believe ooh, you. Cold in California? What happened? How oh, come? So basically to um, to go into all the details uh, on our products, on our wood band products, we actually recommend it to you to have a pointed brush. In our case, we use a posh chalk uh, molding brush. We have a point, it's, it's pointed, and it, it helps to go better into all the uh, crafts and all the lines and all the details of the molding. Can I have the pot, please? Have what? The pot, please. So this is a blue Prussian, if I do say so myself. I think I've learned how to say it now, but it's a really nice classy colour, this one. So I will go into all the details of the moulding and then I will take a, another post paint paintbrush to use, this, and I will use a stamping technique. Step, stapling technique. Stippling. Stip, stippling. <laughs> and we we'll go over the white part of it. So the post chalk moldings brush is great for getting in all the nooks and crannies. So if you want to go into all the nooks and crannies, use a pointed brush for the bigger area. Just take a white brush or the So uh, with a metallic paste, but with post chalk metallic paste, if you want to give a concrete texture to have it more dense, like I do now, it's okay. But if you have a possibility to make a wash with it, so to give a shine to your surface, a slight shine, while still let the wooden texture be seen under, you will have that metallic look. Well, that's not our case, so I want to cover everything. But if you have a nice wooden texture. So will we be covering the whole thing with this yes. blue cushion? Yes, absolutely, yes. It's a lovely color and it would be a shame. So I'm going to go for a simple design as we've been suggested that we go over complicated with some projects. <laughs> Laurie just says, are you sure that's not the posh chalk gnome brush? <laughs> It's well, the queen puppy brush. That's how we call it here. But officially, it's a molding brush. So. If you do type queen puppy brush onto our website, it sadly won't pop up. So we've been told that we have to say posh chalk moldings brush. But we all know it's the queen puppy. The troll head. So a spritz of water just helped me to uh, spread, to lay better and faster the metallic paste. But if you use a sponge on a flat surfaces, you may not need it. 
So Mihai can use the spritz of water because all of the posh chalk metallic pastes are water-based. So it just helps the paste glide along the surface if you do have a spritz of water. It comes in really handy. And just a quick reminder that if you do want to purchase any of the products that we are using, head over to woodyoubend.com and find your nearest stockist. We've got Elena with us from Greece. Hello, Elena. How's the weather in Greece? And Kim is loving the brush. She wants one. What? The Queen Poppy one? We might do a giveaway with one. Who knows? <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe one day. Okay. Do we have Elizabeth with, with us? Elizabeth, are you watching? Because we've got some pearly pigments just for you. <laughs> you asked. I hope you're here. No, she, she will watch us tomorrow and say, oh, you yeah. promised me. And then we'll send her back to you. So we did get a recommendation. Elizabeth really wanted to see some pearly pigments. So we've chosen the Posh Chalk Precious Collection. The, what one are we using? Platinum gold. Platinum gold. Okay, so. And that's a nice pearly pigment for dry brushing. So once Mihai has covered this whole surface in blue Prussian, then we will be doing some dry brushing. Okay, the moldings are done. So now I'll just take another stippling brush and we go over the surface. So I'll give it a rough texture. Yes. Priya, that is one secret we will never tell. <laughs> XOXO. Which one exactly? Um, Kim says she wants to, she wants the brush and Priya says let's find out where they hide it at night. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now using the Posh Chalk stencil brush. It's really good for you, the stippling technique. So me has just creating a bit of texture with this technique. And also, if Fedra was here, she'd be barking, thinking someone was at the door. I want to create the texture because after that, as I said, I'm going to go with the uh, black patina. So I want the black patina to go into all the, this texture to give depth to the design. Perfect. Lovely jubbly. No. I can't help myself. Well, that's Shannon. There's just some bits that you can't see here. Obviously there are. So I'm going to be a, a helping a helping hand. You know, this is just a really good way of saying... If, so, if, so, if somebody plays with the chalk products in front of you, you just... They're so addictive. Everybody... Oh, that's so nice. Remember, it's I'm only helping. Yes, yes, I'm not jealous. Don't worry. Beautiful, beautiful. I think this is my favorite posh up paste color. Not red, big, and cadmium. What would you say is your pop, your best way to clean pigments from brushes? It's always best to do it while it's still wet. Water. Wash them straight away with warm, soapy water. Water is the best. And the blue, this blue that we're using is blue Prussian. So as soon as we're done with any of our brush, we've got a pot of water at the side and it's straight in the pot of water. Without letting it dry, because once it's dried, you still may clean it, but you will need... It's really, difficult. It's difficult and you need a lot of water, boiled warm water. Okay. And now it's pigment mixing time. Pigment no. mixing time. No. no. I'll let you suffer. No, no, no. That's top corner. 
Where is the pen browser to be used? You put it in the water. Well, that one is wet. So I'm going to take that one. It's always good to have a bunch of pen browsers with you. You can never have too many paintbrushes. Absolutely not. Um, underneath, yeah, the white bit. There we go. Don't forget to send me hi some love. If you're loving this project, love. And the other one holding a cute love heart, that's cute too. Okay. So now I'm going to mix some patina with patina extending wax. But first, I'm gonna dry it. So we're gonna proceed, and the patina would not mix with the metallic paste. So this paste that we've used is our Posh Chop Metallic Paste. You can purchase it from your nearest stockist. Type in woodyourbend.com and you will find a nearest stockist near you. And it's a smooth metallic paste. So as you can see, it's a very simple, easy project. That might be created in a few minutes. So stay with us because we will be doing some pigment mixing from the precious collections very shortly. So I'm going to take a mix of uh, patina with some wax so it will be more. Uh, Can we say exactly what we mean? Yes, we're using patina extending wax and black wax, uh, black uh, patina. So we're using the posh chalk patina black and the posh chalk patina extending wax. Okay. And it smells divine. It smells so good. So the posh chalk ex patina extending wax just helps you. You can add patina to it and you can create your own colored wax. And seeing that we have different patina colors, you mean. So it kind of says what it is on the tin. Easy, got straightforward. Fleur on YouTube saying so pretty. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Fleur. Okay, and Laurie is asking, have you ever put rice paper on glass? Yes, we have put the Jack Pash paper on glass. It's very, very simple, but we haven't done it in a while. Maybe we could do it on a live soon. Maybe. Uh, the thing is that the decoupage is always better, and we always recommend to have a white background under. And because if you put it on the glass, it could be seen that uh, the paper, it's... Uh, the decoupage paper is slightly transparent. It might lose some of the color if it would be on transparent glass. So I'm gonna go over. Now we're just going all the way over with the black patina. Black patina. Mix with posh chalk patina extending wax. Yep, let's just show them the mixture of clips. Wait. I still need it. Give me a sec. Yes, lovely. I wish you could smell it too. So now to leave the the black to give a shade and to leave the black patina only in a darker, so it will give the the depth to it. I will just dab and take the excess off the surface. Don't worry, I'll get closer so you would be able to see it so we want to dab it back while it's still wet so we can take off as much or as little as we want and again we turn back to it. it's up to you to you and your choices and your preferences so this just gives it a, a an aged look and it's also great if you are going for a shabby chic theme and it gives uh, a shade so basically gives depth to your project, 
to the moldings, to the texture surface that I just stiffly dab it. So yeah, I need another one. So you, all you need is just kitchen roll, normal paper, and just take off the excess. So I think it's time for a close up. So before the pigments go on, we've just aged it a tiny bit, and then we will go over with some nice highlights. And then a satisfying tape reveal to finish off. Now, to clean even more some of the area, I'll go over the moldings with a wet wipe. So we can do this because our posh chalk paste is dry, so it won't come off if it's dry. But obviously every paint, once while it's dry, it will not come off, it will not gonna rub it with a strong minute. Well, uh, here and there some touches, but it's again all up to you and your preferences. Well. That's one. Oh, we've got Ciao dall'Italia on YouTube. Oh, Ciao dall'Italia, chi è che? Simone Pavesi, ciao. All right. So now. Did they do a close up for both cameras? Yeah, I did. And now it's time for our wash chalk. Pigments. So we've decided. All you need for that, you'll need a pot. Posh pigments, obviously. A pipette, as it will, I will show you in a second, it helps you better to for mix to control the density of it. And you will need a posh pigment infuser, as from the name, from the name, it, as you can see, it comes. It means that we need it to mix our pigment. Well, I guess it took too much. So keep in mind that when you're using a pigment, a little Always goes a long way, so always add little by little, so do it in small doses. And as well, with a pipette, it's all it's better and easier to control the density as the pigment actually you may create create it more dense, so to make it as a metallic paste, or to make it more liquidy and to make a wash. And again, as as with the... Uh... <gasps> Mihai is grumpy today. He's not letting me mix. As with the uh, with the metallic paste. We want to see it on camera. We want to see it close up. <laughs> so just for close-ups, Cheryl will, will show you the, uh, the pearly Ooh, pigments good. that I've been asked to show. And I'm not sure if that person is actually... No, Elizabeth is not online, but we'll still Elizabeth, show you. I kept my promise. How so. pearly the pigments are. Nice and shiny. It's a really nice pigment. I have a really nice coverage. And as I was starting to say, you have an actual choice to make it uh, more dense as a metallic paste or to make it more... to give it a wash. So again, if you have a nice wooden texture, and you want to keep it, you may just make it more liquidy to give it that shine on top, but still being able to see that text, uh, wooden texture under. Are you ready? Yep, so Liz, you can keep the post chalk pigments once you've mixed it, just keep it in an airtight container. And obviously it's, it's always best to use fresh. So just bear that in mind when you are making it. Um, That's why we're saying exactly to Make, make uh, a little dose in a small per proportion so you ain't gonna have to keep it in an airtight container for a long time because it's always better to use it fresh. But you, you, can, you can store it if you, if you wish. We've stored it for a few weeks before. Well, that's true. But the soup is always tastier when it's fresh. Wow. Um, 
very, very beautiful. No, I can't. I, I, I need them to, to paint. So, me and my sausage hands go together. <laughs> sausage fingers. Laurie says, I love it, my favorite, but she says at first, I love you, my favorite. I thought you were saying you loved us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ready? Yeah. So you may go uh, to you heavier with a dry brush or lighter, as I like just a tiny bit to put accents on the shapes. But I've seen a lot of projects that looks actually really nice with much more heavier dry brushing on. And don't so, forget, if you do go heavy, a bit too heavy with your dry brushing, you can use a wet wipe to wipe it off the posh up pigments while it's still wet. Okay, and that should be it. I'll just take off the tape now. I would like to bring a chalk from the top so I worked. Thank you. No. Who's going to be now? I'm not going to. So. <laughs> I'll just see that I added a face on it. I just don't want to take it off with the tape. So I'll go slightly with the knife. Corners. Make sure that when the tape will come off, it come off without ripping some paste from the sides. Okay, let's go and see. So that's it. Easy and simple project that would definitely make your table with the guests. That will surprise you, guess. Okay. So, blue Prussian, black patina, and Gucci Latin band gold. moldings. And that was it for today. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be very glad and happy to see you next time. YouTube, promise next time will be better. If that, one, if that one wasn't. And see ya. Have a lovely day. You too. Bye -bye. And thanks for sharing love. See, oh, idea. Loving the idea of a fancy blackboard. Yeah, thank you. Don't forget, if you do create um, anything, oh, I'm here. If you, do, if you do create anything, post it in the Posh Talk, Would You Bend and Posh Talk Arts and Creation group, which is on Facebook. And um, it's free to join. So we'll see you there. Bye. Bye-bye. And bye-bye, YouTube. Wave. Wave.